The next step in the flower making process is to make some static grass little tufts. Um, eventually I'll be dotting little bits of glue on the tips of some of the static grass and dipping them in my sawdust flowers. Now, I want to say up front, if you are interested in doing this, do not use or buy the static grass applicator that I used. I was ready to toss it after trying to do these tufts. It's just so cheap, it just doesn't work very well. In fact, I ended up just grabbing some of the static grass in my fingers and adding it to the glue straight up and down so that I would get more grasses that were pointing upwards instead of kind of lying flat or just splayed downward. Now what I'm doing here, um, I didn't have a piece of a thin piece of wood, so I just used cardboard and drilled a bunch of holes in it. And I'm applying just regular PVA Elmer's glue, just a little drop in each hole, trying to avoid getting it on the sides. This template did help to have the grass stick straight up, but still not enough for me. So I think I videoed. Uh, just showing grabbing some in my fingers and just kind of very carefully sticking them in each pile. Now in addition to the cardboard I also just used uh, little dabs on top of just uh, what is that parchment paper. You want to do it on top of wax paper or parchment paper so that they will remove easily. And then I also did a couple of long strips there. Now holding the applicator like an inch above um, you just continue to sprinkle um, the grasses over the glue in the applicator I had a mixture of light green and medium green static grass uh, two sizes four millimeter and six millimeter now here this is where I was getting frustrated I just used my hands and tried to stick uh, some of the six millimeter straw, I believe it is, in the glue. I still wanted some taller little spikes in some of the grass tufts. So what I did was I grabbed an old chip brush and started cutting um, little clumps of maybe five or six hairs from the brush and then gluing them in the center of the tufts. That was easier to do because the hairbrush, br hairbrush, the paintbrush bristles were stiff and longer, so I could hold on to them a lot better than the static grass. Don't you just love wisteria? I know it can be a very invasive plant, but you know there are kinds now that aren't as invasive. In fact, one's called Amethyst Falls, and we have that growing on our front fence line at the gate entrance. Anyway, I love coming through the gate when they are in bloom. They're just gorgeous. So that gave me an idea. I'd like to try to create some wisteria to drape up and over the Chateau des Plumes sign. I went out and actually cut what I thought was the perfect little twirly vine off of our own wisteria bush to use on this project. So now it's time to try to figure out, okay, how am I gonna do this? I grabbed some twine because I thought, okay, I need something fluffy that is already kind of a brown color. I thought about cotton balls, but I thought, no, I'd never be able to cover up all that, all the white of a cotton ball. Didn't want to take the time to dye it or anything. So I just grabbed some twine and started separating it. You know, that's what I used to make the ivy on the bottom of the birdhouse, if you watched that video. So anyway, Using the twine, I made some little clumps, kind of folded them in half, um, and made them kind of the length of 
the actual flowering bush that I thought would look right on the sign. This was a little tedious, but in the end, I think it worked. Um, I ended up using seven. I think I made nine little clumps, but I only finished up seven of them, probably because I was getting tired, and I thought, okay, I don't want to overload it uh, either um, and make it look top-heavy, so seven sounded right. And basically, um, this is the time to use the sawdust buds that I made, and I used both of the colors of purples the lighter and the darker and then I also used after I kind of got it coated on there I also used the larger clumps of the same colors that weren't as fine and I put those more toward the top because if you look at a wisteria bloom they seem to be bigger and wider open at the top and also lighter in color so I used mostly the lighter purple at the top but basically, it was just a process of using a paintbrush and Mod Podge and painting it on there, trying to get it individually on some of the hairy pieces. But it didn't really matter if it clumped together some, because to me, that's what Wisteria Blooms look like. So I'll let you watch a minute, and then we'll move on to attaching, making leaves. Oh, and another thing. I ended up pulling my sign very carefully out of the base unit because I just could not work with it standing straight up. I should have pre-thought about that, but I didn't think about putting the wisteria on the sign until after I already had the sign post in the base. Anyway, it will be easy enough to reattach it to the base when I'm completely finished with the beautiful wisteria vine. Shiny cars 
An English cottage garden just wouldn't be complete without this next flower, foxgloves. Well, I did not want to just use the little sawdust particles for the actual flowering foxgloves because scale-wise, I needed mine to be bigger, but only about two inches tall bigger, and I wanted to try to make them look really real. So I decided to use some hardy clay. Uh, the little wires I cut were already paper coated off of the, uh, well, the little English ball topiaries uh, that was just spare wire. And I thought, well, I'll just use that since it's coated, it probably will stick to the clay better and I won't have to wrap any of my thinner wire. I decided to pre-color the clay, which was a good idea, but it was really sticky at first. So um, letting it dry a little bit if you try this is the ticket. But I want to tell you, this was a little difficult. The first one I made, every little green bud, every little colored flower bud, and every little open foxglove flower, I individually put a wire through each one and then attached them to the main wire and wrapped it with more floral tape. Oh my word, that took a long time. And after I finished it, I looked at it and I thought, well, it's really pretty. But it's going to be crazy if I only have one foxglove in the landscaping. So I forced myself to figure out a way to maybe be more production line with making the rest. And I did not wire every piece. I only used one wire and glue to kind of glue the buds onto the wire where they looked okay. Um, these would have been a lot more fun to make if I if they were big, but they weren't big. They were teeny tiny. I knew I needed to have an odd number, and I wanted the two colors of the kind of that peach and that more magenta peach -y color uh, in the roses that I had made that are on the birdhouse and on the wa rock wall. So um, I'm showing you a little bit of the process, the first process. And now I will show you the fast process. Well, the faster process.